Hey everybody, welcome to On Hand Art. It is great to see you. Now, I'm not above breaking things, which is why I took apart my copper wire vase that I made about a year or so ago. And now I have a bunch of this copper wire and the bottle I cut for that previous vase. So today's piece will be a working vase using that pre-cut bottle. And then I'll be making a framework around it using this copper wire. But you'll also be working on my soldering skills with me as we go. And then we're going to be working on the concept of using PVA glue and paint skins to coat the outer frame. It's a whole thing. You'll see what I'm talking about. In the meantime, follow along and see if you can use these ideas and techniques for your own amazing art. Let's get started. I started with some sketches, eventually landing on the idea of wanting to be able to see the glass in little windows through the outer skin of the vase. Now that meant I needed to have at least one part of the vase touching the glass. So while I do have a plan for where I want to end up, I'm making much of this up as I go along. I do know that the first step is to make the PVA glue skin since that's going to take a day or two to dry. Now to do that, you're simply going to spread some plastic wrap on a flat surface, tape it in place, and then paint on a thick layer of your PVA glue. I'm using Mod Podge in the yellow bottle. Now that turned out to be an important point when I tried the outdoor version and it's a very different product. Instead of being a nice plasticky sheet like the yellow stuff, it stayed gummy and it clung to itself. So lesson learned, but while that dries over the next couple of days, I have plenty of time to work on the wire cage. I'm starting with the base ring that will be the foundation of the entire piece. I have this six strand twist of wire from the old vase, but it's not nearly long enough to wrap around the bottle. So I divided it into two twists of three wires and now I can solder them end to end, giving me plenty of length to work with. I've talked in other videos about soldering technique, but if you're one of the handful of people who haven't been watching me for a while, here's what you need to know. I'm using what's called 44 resin core solder. It's a tin lead alloy usually used for electronics. Now, I've been told by a couple of people that the lead is pretty much locked up inside the tin, but just don't eat or drink out of anything you use this on. You'll want to use like plumbing solder for that. It's a whole different thing. You also don't need a fancy soldering iron. The one I'm using probably looks fancier than it really is. But you do need a wet sponge, that's important. So to solder, you're gonna hold the soldering iron kinda like a pen, and then you're gonna clean the tip on the sponge, and then immediately melt some solder onto it. That's called tinning, and it protects the tip. And then with the parts you want to connect ready to go, heat them up with the soldering iron as you gently feed in the solder. For the main uprights, I'm soldering them onto the base ring first. And then I'm taking time to give them the curve that I want for the sides of the vase. Each of these will become the corners of the vase and I want them to be identical as well. So I'll get them as close as I can to identical and then I'll hook the ends of the wires onto the top of the bottle. And then I'm gonna solder them onto a ring inside the bottle to hold everything in place. Remember, you are welding here, you're not gluing. So don't let the parts move until the solder goes from shiny to dull. And then you can also give them a little test to make sure your weld is holding. The other important thing to keep your soldering iron in good shape is to put it back in the holder without cleaning it. You're only gonna clean the soldering iron before you solder. And it's like anything else, just practice, 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 and you'll eventually get the hang of it. And then I'll add a coil of wire to further define where the windows will go, but also to give the structure its strength and definition. I'm also adding these columns to define the sides of the windows. And then what gives the frame strength overall are all the soldered intersections that create the triangles, boxes, and shorter lengths of wire. This whole frame took me about two hours, but I really enjoy soldering. So I quickly got into kind of a state of flow and time just, well, flew by. Now at this point you can add more wire and just leave it as is, but I never planned to be able to see the structure directly. So let's grab our glue skin and start wrapping this frame. With the glue nice and dry, it's pretty easy to peel off the plastic. Now if you do tear it, just put it back down and add a layer of glue and let that dry. And then because the form has a lot of curves, I can't just wrap it in one go. So the trick is to cut the panels so that they just overhang the sides and then add a healthy coat of Mod Podge to the panels before pressing them onto the wire frame. The other trick is to pull it snug and wrap it around the wires, being careful not to pull too hard and ripping it. 
and then also give each panel some time to set up before moving on to the next one or you'll risk it moving or ripping on you. To make this easier, I started with the two curved sides and worked to wrap the edges of the glue panels around the frame. This keeps the edges flatter so you don't get ripples and puckers when you go to add the front and back panels. And then adding the front and back panels actually went pretty smoothly. I just took time to smooth the edges down as the glue dried. And then once you have all the PVA panels on, let them dry until they're clear. Now here's the thing, you're not going to get a smooth panel like you would with clay, glass, or wood. You're going to get something that's more like a painting. So if you've seen any of my other work, you know that's pretty much my thing. I like the idea of making 2D paintings real 3D objects. So as I paint the PVA layer, I'm fully expecting to end up with a lot of texture. And I want to both use that, but I'll also fill in and adjust as I go. So I'm adding thicker areas of paint to areas I want to even out. Now, I do know that when the paint dries, it won't be as even, but that's pretty much what I'm going for. And then once that all dried, I realized I was missing something. I gave it some thought over a couple of days, and all I really could picture was this kind of hazy idea of flowers. So I just started painting, and I let the flowers dictate where they wanted to go. Sometimes I did disagree with the flowers, and I scraped those off, but for the most part, I didn't put too much thought into it. Now, I think it's important to mention that I let this piece do its own thing. I find that when I try and force the art to do exactly what I want, I'm never as happy with it. Now we could delve into the psychology of that, but if you're not happy with your art, maybe try letting the art do what it's going to do. Now that might not get you the result you're exactly going for, but it also might help you let go of holding onto a very specific vision. And that can help you lower your expectations from perfection down to excellence. It also helps you even find inspiration that will take your work in directions you never expected. Now, another thing I made up as I went along was cutting out the windows. I'm basically following the same way they cut openings for windows when they're building a house. So what they do is they cut a big X in the house wrap, and then they fold it around the frame of the house. So that's what I'm doing here. And I found out that the back of a tweezers was just the right thickness to get under the wire and help me push the glue skin in. Now, once that dries, I'll clean it up and I can show you the finished piece. And if you enjoyed this video and would like more ideas, feel free to hit the like button and subscribe. I would love to have you as part of the OnHand Art community. And if you did like this video, I'll leave a link to one that YouTube thinks you'll also like. But thanks for watching, and remember, you are creative. <laughs>